All right, so we're gonna build a home inspection toolbox today. I've actually been waiting a long time to do this. I really delayed it longer than I should uh, because I'm sure everyone loves tools and this one will gain you know, some good traction, hopefully. Uh, whenever I'm talking about this toolbox, uh, leave comments of tools that you think I should get or review or that you have in your toolbox too, that would be great. And then also please take the time and subscribe to this channel because uh, that's how we know that we're doing a good job. And uh, so subscribe. So we're, let's um, <laughs> talk about uh, the first uh, bare minimum, what the bare minimum tools that you're required to have in the state of Texas to complete a home inspection. And you need something just as small as a ladder. It needs to be an 18 foot ladder, something that you can reach a one story roof with. And I recommend the little giant ladder. Uh, this one's old. This is one of my very first ladders. It's seven years old, probably been opened and closed a thousand times. And uh, this bad boy, has lasted a long time. So you only need a ladder, a pair of binos, a screwdriver, a, a water pressure gauge, a digital camera, a, a digital camera you can actually get away with just using your cell phone. So your cell phone, so you can even get away with not even having a digital camera and use your cell phone for photos. A uh, tape measure, because some of the things you have to prove is tape measuring a flashlight. I recommend spending over $100 on your flashlight, but you can technically get away with a $20 flashlight. And then uh, um, a outlet tester. You're not even required to carry a voltage sniffer, but an outlet tester. Um, that is the bare minimum. Of course, I never recommend going with the bare minimum because if you go with the bare minimum, that will get you in trouble uh, because people expect you to try to find absolutely everything and you're not ever gonna find absolutely everything, but the tools help define uh, what you're going to find, such as the, the non-intrusive tools, that's the most expensive items. So I'm gonna go through, dive in, and at the, below the, this video, we're gonna attach a link of our tool inventory too. So if you're looking at trying to build a toolbox or wondering what's exactly in our toolbox, you can go and click that link below, and that'll take you to our website of where we have the tool inventory. Um, so each item, we're going to go into it, is uh, just the binoculars. You know, the funny thing is, as a home inspector, what I realize is I actually don't really use these this op that often. Uh, most of the time, I like to try to get on the roof or get as close as possible. So you'll even see me put up my ladder to get to where I need to go. So good to have whenever you need to use them. But I'd say I'd probably pull them out maybe once or maybe once every two weeks or once a week. So you don't really use the binos that often, but they're required to be there just to say, to follow the state standards, but one of your least used tools, I'd say. And the screwdriver, this one I use is the Klein one, the multi-purpose screwdriver. I wish I took this one out of the package, but I didn't. But you can change the tips. There's like 16 different ways you can use a screwdriver. And uh, that just saves you from going back to your toolbox because every panel box has like a different screw or, or on it or a different way to open things. And this covers most of them. Uh, the water pressure gauge, I go with this heavy, this heavy set uh, water pressure gauge. Uh, you can buy the cheaper ones, but this one with the fluid, seems to be give me the most accurate readings when it comes to uh, the water pressure gauge and it the, the hardier. But one thing you wanna realize is whenever you first open it is uh, you wanna make sure that this bar right here is at zero. If it's not at zero, that means it's defective and you need to send it back because these are a little pricey. Sometimes they're like 30 bucks. So um, it adds up whenever you, as your team grows. $30 is your cheapest tool in the toolbox almost. I like these little Stanley um, tape measures. Again, you don't really tape measure too many things and this is more for your client because whenever you show up and they're, one of the most things that they're worried about is if their furniture fits or not, you're like, hey, got a tape measure in there. It lets you to kind of focus on your job and they can tape measure things. The outlet testers, you know, there's a bunch of one. Oh, you need the one with the GFCI setting, which is right here. So. You need the GFCI testing uh, setting outlet tester. Uh, this, every, there's a bunch of arguments which one's the best. In my opinion, they all work pretty well. Uh, as soon as it goes out, just buy another one. You, you go through these pretty quick. They're about $8 a piece, and you're checking you know, 100 outlets every other day, so these do tend to break. So um, just 
you need this outlet tester. And my favorite flashlight is the Phoenix PDF 40R. I carry, this is that flashlight that you see me carrying every day in the field. The reason why I like this one, it's not a concentrated beam. It's a, um, it's like a floodlight almost, I would say. And it really helps uncover things. The only thing that sucks is whenever this sits in your pocket, the on button sits right here and it blasts you in the face. I'd say pretty often. So uh, I wish they would take this flashlight and put a button right here so you can turn on and off. And that's the reason why my guys like the other flashlight and I'll show you that one a little bit. So uh, that is your bare minimum. So continuing on further in this video, everything else that I talk about is extra. And uh, I know some inspectors don't agree with some of the tools that I carry with like carrying wrenches or extra screwdrivers or knives to open up things. but. Those are the things that I really think define that keeps me out of trouble. You know, if I'm going above and beyond for my client, 90% of the time, they're going to be happy with the product. 99.9% .9 of the time. <laughs> All right, um, let's, we'll move further on. So um, moving on with the, what else is in our toolbox, everything else after this is uh, extra. So um, it's not required, but I definitely recommend carrying it because you don't use it every day, but when you do use it, it really makes a difference in your findings and how you document them. So um, the next item that I like to carry is this digital thermometer. If you have an AC unit that's uh, not performing very well, this is a, another way that you can document the findings. You can uh, put the, the thermometer, take a picture of it in the return, and then you can actually go in the ductwork in the attic area, and we carry the tape to cover up the hole, but you can put it in the ductwork too as well. Um, it is technically kind of an intrusive test, but any HVAC company that comes in behind you, they're going to perform the same test uh, whenever they use this. And if it shows up 15 or 16 degrees difference, they're gonna be like, well, your inspector's an idiot. Well, I can, if you carry this, least likely chance you'll be called an idiot by an HVAC technician. And also you can prove that it wasn't working the day that you were there. So a really good tool to have is this pocket thermometer. The next item is I like to carry this carry ca carrier case. Uh, this keeps all your tools in one spot. Uh, so this is my favorite one, a little clip. Uh, some of my other guys, they carry bigger ones. Uh, this one fits me the best. It carries most of the tools that I can accomplish around the house. The main thing that you're carrying most of the time is your digital camera, your voltage sniffer, the uh, outlet tester, and the screwdriver. Everything else is, is worth the trip back. So I try to keep my weight kind of light on me and my flashlight goes right here. So. But uh, um, this is a good this is a good carrying case, and it's pretty hardy. I still have the original one whenever I first started. Uh, next one item is the razor knife. <laughs> it took me a second. I don't know. Uh, razor knives are good because if you have a panel box that is cut, um, that is painted, or you have an access panel that's painted. If you use this razor knife here, it's uh, least likely that you're gonna damage the property. So uh, less chance of damage the property. So you can do a fine cut around and open up the panel box without ripping paint off the wall. Uh, it's a really good thing to have. Uh, some people will consider that intrusive. I do not because if you don't open up the panel box, people are gonna get mad because you have to go back and then a lot of people charge reinspection fees because they couldn't access that. That's not what we do here. We try to get to knock out everything we can at the time of the inspection because if you have to go back, you're eating costs and reinspection fees, you're actually losing money on anyways if uh, you look at the budget. We can talk about that later. Um, next item is the, uh, the monkey wrench. A lot of times I've been in classes, monkey wrench, a plumber's wrench, sorry. Uh, the plumber's wrench. Uh, the reason why I carry this is because I've had water lines break while I was inside a property when I'm like operating things. And a lot of people say, don't carry this because it's gonna, you're gonna try to operate things you're not supposed to. Actually, this is to shut down things that break while you're doing the home inspection because sometimes you're inspecting things that people have never touched. And if, they're, if they uh, come in and you start operating it and the faucet shoots out the wall, you need a way to, you need a way to shut the water off. So. Uh, really good tool to have. The uh, voltage sniffer, uh, ignore this one. This one doesn't have a GFCI tester. You can carry it, but I accidentally bought this one, but I have all the GFCI testers too. But the voltage sniffer, uh, really important. Uh, it 
tells you if a wire is live or not. And uh, if you follow Ruben Saltzman, I think that's his last name, on YouTube too, well, he has a really good video on how to use a voltage sniffer and how they aren't as accurate, but they can still keep you out of trouble, especially in a crawl space. I like to carry this in a crawl space and leave it on because sometimes the ground can be charged while you're walking. And if it's the ground is charged, this will light up and you need to get out. So, uh, because the, the soil can be damp. So something that's really good, life-saving, and it helps prove your argument a lot in the photos that you take. Allen wrenches, don't really need to explain this too much, but Allen wrenches, sometimes you need an Allen wrench to get to things and open things up. It'll save you a trip. So just buy $13, $15 worth of Allen wrenches and throw it in there. Commercial break, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. We need you to subscribe so uh, we can keep this up. <laughs> All right, um, next thing is the, the electrical tester. This is really good, really important for uh, dryers. The dryer outlets, the 240 outlets, and then even the 120 outlets, you need to make sure that there's adequate power there. There's been several times where I've been inspecting and I tested the dryer outlet and it, it is only pulling a 120, so you know there's something wrong there. So definitely need this. The electrical tester. Next, gas log operator key. You need this because you're going to be searching for these keys in people's houses and you don't want to say you didn't inspect it because there was no key provided. It's seven dollars, throw it in your toolbox. You can operate all the gas fireplaces in a property and I don't need to go into that. <laughs> yeah, um, and then to operate the the fireplace, always carry a lighter. You can see one of the guys already took one, uh, but the gas log lighter is really important and uh, you're gonna go through these pretty often. You always wanna test the gas. And people love it too, when you, op when you light the fireplace, you teach them how to do it. You'd be surprised how many people do not know how to operate their own gas logs. A lot of first time home buyers, you walk them through the steps, you got a client for life. Uh, next one we have the ratchet set. And I like to carry this one because there's literally a head for literally almost everything. You don't really wanna put this in your toolbox. I'd keep this in your backpack or even in your truck. You don't use this that often, but when you need it, it really comes in handy. It has all the little different ratchet sets, all the weird diamond heads and the smaller ratchets. And there's some times where you're like, wow, this, uh, this came in handy. <laughs> Check the recording, I got paranoid. <laughs> Uh, so you definitely want to uh, carry this ratchet set right here. I almost forgot about this. This is the next item. Uh, the system that we're using, that we're moving to, to report our items is we chose the software called Spectora. It is one of the more expensive softwares on the market, but uh, their product goes with their name. And we figured out the best way that we like to document it is with the iPad mini five <laughs> ipad mini five with the largest amount of memory it removed all the lag from the program and then also uh it it's easy to document and it looks well whenever you show your clients the product at the end what we decided to do is we got this heavy carrying case this will be on the links below but it'll be it's in this carrying case it's really nice so if you drop it it, it can take a it can take a beating so it's a good good addition to the toolbox. So this actually replaced our camera. So your camera used to cost 500 to $400. This tablet costs $650 with a data plan of 20 bucks a month. And you can get that with Verizon or AT&T, whichever one you do uh, decide and it's unlimited. So really good addition to our toolbox and I'm super excited about adding them into the field. The next thing is, this one's really controversial actually, is I like to call this the master key. Um, you, I carry the bolt cutters and you typically almost never use this, but sometimes sellers accidentally leave a deadbolt on the toolbox. You can call the listing agent and ask permission to chop it off. And I'd say most of the time they say, I almost actually most of the time, every time they say yes, because they don't want to drive back. It's an $8 lock anyways. And they, uh, you just chop it off. You move on with your day. There's no delay. People running back and forth to get you in the toolbox. So I say carry some bolt cutters. These are the smaller ones. I thought the, I bought the bigger ones. I, I like to carry the 24 inch ones, but 18 inches will, you just have to put some more muscle behind it. Uh, the next item 
I like to carry is a, a meaty screwdriver or a fat screwdriver. And the reason why I do this, it's actually mainly for digging for termites uh, and checking rotted wood and a little bit more distance. And also it's good for testing um, smoke alarms. You can test uh, smoke alarms because I'm short and I need another 18 inches to, to reach uh, the outlet test, uh, the, the smoke alarm. So uh, really good. Uh, I recommend getting a, a meaty a screwdriver in there or a longer screwdriver so you can dig in those high soil areas or you can reach those smoke alarms. Next item is the uh, infrared uh, thermometer. This is what you're going to use most of the time to get the temperatures off your AC units. Uh, you're going to hit the you're going to hit the air, the air return or you're going to hit the, the output. The air return, but the air return almost reads the same temperature of anywhere in the room. So I'll, you can actually just point this anywhere because it's shooting a broad temperature area. And remember, it's reading surface area. So you have to get an idea of how you're reading these temperatures. But really good to prove that the heat is working on the day of the inspection and the AC. So uh, you definitely want to carry one of these. This is not an option of not carrying it. Every inspector carries one of these. Uh, another screwdriver set that I hook up my inspectors with, but I like to carry the insulated uh, screwdriver set. The reason why I carry this, I don't like to die. So, <laughs> you know, so this insulated screwdriver set right here will keep you from death, you know? So if you have like aluminum wiring in a house, uh, I th I'm not 100% on this if it's required or not, but I like to see if it's been, I need to double check the rules, but if I prove that, if I see there's aluminum wiring in a panel box, we use these to open up an outlet to see if it's been replaced down the line. So if we have aluminum wiring, I'm gonna repeat myself, I guess, but aluminum wiring in a panel box, I need to see if, there's, if it's been done right at the outlet. So if there's antioxidant gel, if it's been spliced wrong. So we use the, uh, the insulated screwdrivers to do that. Uh, next one, I guess this is a controversial one too. I'll open this later, I guess. But this is a uh, water meter key. This will allow you to shut the water off to the house if you need to. So. If you walk up, and this has happened, you can check out one of our previous YouTube videos where Josh walked up to a house, water was flowing out of the house, he was carrying one of these bad boys, you can go to the street and shut off the water. Again, not required. Uh, you can also turn on the water to the property. A lot of people don't recommend it, but make sure that you get the permission to do it. And I really say it's a two-man job if you turn on the water to the house. If you turn on the water to the house, you want someone inside to yell at you to shut it off if you need to. And if, remember, if you turn it on to do the inspection, you want to make sure you turn it off as you leave. You always want to leave the property exactly like you left it. Uh, our new addition to the toolbox, this is going to be added to everybody's. Uh, it was a request by one of our home inspectors, is the headlamp uh, because we're moving to tablets. It's a, a Phoenix flashlight, a thousand lumens. It'll blast open and really light up the attic and help them take pictures because the iPad minis do not have flashes on it, which is kind of annoying, but we're gonna replace it with the headlamps, which is gonna be good, good. I know this seems kind of silly, I have to say it, but you need a uniform shirt of some sort. We, each, and I say choose a uniform shirt for your environment. Um, the environment here is hot and humid, so that's why we chose these fishing shirts, and plus they look awesome. <laughs> You just uh, name it, uh, put some labels on it, and it really, uh, it really looks good. So whenever you're choosing a shirt, don't go with those cheap $20 polo shirts. Really spend some money on this because that whatever shirt you're going to do, it's $20 for the shirt, it's $20 to embroider it, and it's a $40 shirt. I recommend buying a $50 shirt that's going to last you a long time and then embroider it for you know, $20, $30, and it, and it lasts you a long time. So pick a good shirt, the Columbia ones. And then all my guys love the Columbia shirts, so I don't really have any complaints, and we get compliments on this one pretty often. Uh, next tool, if you follow most of the social media, but uh, Charles Buell taught an electrical class, and we started adding these to our toolbox. You can, it really helps determine if a wire is carrying a load, so it's a mini AC clamp on meter. So it can really, if, you can actually wrap this around a ground and the ground is carrying a load. You can determine that there's something wrong or defective with this panel box. So 
Uh, it's, a, it's a good tool to have. I don't really use this that much. I really need to add it into my routine more uh, with this toolbox, put it in our toolbox. I need to take a break, I need some water. <laughs> After that quick water break, I ran out of breath there. Um, we are, the backpack that I like to carry are, so this is gonna be more for your electronics and not so much of your tools uh, or like your booties or, or towels and stuff that you carry. Uh, I like to carry this, uh, the K-Swiss backpack. It is a little expensive. Uh, I guess that's relative, but I think it's like a $60 backpack. But this thing is a beast. It lasts a really long time. I still have the first backpack that I bought like four or five years ago, and it it lasts forever. And you throw it over your shoulder every day. You set it down in people's areas. You know, it's in your hot truck all day, and it still works. I mean, nothing has came apart. All the zippers work on it. So it's a really good backpack. So I recommend using this K-Swiss brand. Um, the next item is booties. Booties just look good and it keeps you from hiring a carpet cleaning company. Whenever I was a brand new home inspector, I think I was about one year old and I was down here in Houston and I walked through the mud and then the brand new house just tracked mud all the way up the stairs and through the hallway. It was so embarrassing. So I made sure I always carried booties from then on out and you take them on and off on the front door. This is going to be part of your toolbox all the time. I mean, it's just, it's gonna be there every day and it looks good when, you, when it shows that you're taking care of people's houses is by putting these on. So always carry booties. Booties, backpack. All right, we'll move into the TIFF 8900. Uh, one thing about this TIFF 8900, it works really well, but whenever you're testing for gas leak, keep this nose out of the, keep this nose outside of the, um, whatever you're testing, because if this gets dirty and gunked up, it starts to get really hard. You can buy replacements. I think the replacements are like 40 or $30. So it adds up if you keep getting this dirty. So make sure you keep, take care of this tool. And it seems a little flimsy for $160, but it works really well and they last a really long time. And it's rechargeable, so that's nice. Anything is a, that's rechargeable for a home inspector is good. Put that here. Um, next item is the Survey Master for the Prodimeter. This is has the pins and the non-intrusive water testing meter. <laughs> the water <laughs> testing meter. So, uh, non-intrusive testing. So that's the most important part of the home inspector. Uh, it tests three fourths of an inch back into the wall, and it reads through tile too as well which is good, but be careful when you're using this, get used to it, use it around your own home because it can give you false readings. Uh, so you wanna really try to identify if there's water in area in that area or not. And every now and then I do use the pens, but I already use it that in some area that's already damaged. So say there's a water stain in the air area or the wood's already rotted and I'm proving that it's rotted. So make sure, just be careful and use your judgment how you use the pins on this. And most of the time you're using it for the non-intrusive area. This is an expensive tool. It's like a $600 tool. One of the most expensive items in your toolbox, but this water, uh, this proteometer, I still have the first one that I bought seven years ago. This thing's a beast and I don't, I leave my toolbox in the 100 plus degree heat inside my truck. So I recommend buying this. This thing, it, it lasts forever. And the, mo the next item is the FLIR EX series. Uh, this one is about a $1,600 tool. This one lasts a long time too as well, but I recommend just, if you don't buy this one, get the FLIR C2 or the FLIR C3 and start small and then upgrade as you go as your prices of your inspections increase so you can carry the more expensive tools. I myself and my toolbox, I carry the FLIR 40E XB, whatever, I'll figure it out. It'll be on the bottom there, but that one's a $5,000 FLIR camera. So what I've noticed between all of the items, it's just the clarity of the image and, the, and it's how you're able to read it and the accuracy of it. So this is the nice middle of the line uh, camera, the E6, E8. Those are the really good ones that you recommend using on your inspections because keeps you out of trouble. I can't tell you how many times people have painted over things 
And as we walk in, I'm like, oh, there's a water stain, there's a water leak, there's water behind this wall, or uh, temperature anomalies, that's what they're called. And you're, and you're able to use this camera and then turn around and use your moisture meter to prove that that is water behind the wall. So I, I have to say, try to not do inspections without your flare camera and always use it at the very end of your inspection because that's after you ran all the water in your home. So very important tool to have. You definitely wanna add infrared technology into your inspection. Even if you start out small, sm the smaller camera is better than nothing. Um, so that is almost it. I guess I forgot to talk about this last item. And the last item is uh, these batteries. You always have backup batteries. They're not, not the most expensive item, but there's several times you show up and the, uh, the thermostat's dead or one of your tools are dying and you need backup batteries. So carry backup batteries. I recommend AAA, 9 volt and AA. Just carry all those batteries in there. Um, if you have any tool suggestions of what we should add to our toolbox, hey, I'm always open to it. Oh, I forgot, forgot one more before I do the close. Uh, we carry a zip level. Uh, the zip, I forgot to bring it, it was a huge mistake, but uh, we, it's about a six or $700 tool. You can do a zip level, and then there's also another one called a smart leveler. Uh, get some little bit of training on it, it doesn't require much training, and add that into your toolbox because you can prove how far that floor is sloped. And instead of me just walking, be like, hey, this feels a little uneven, I literally have proof that this floor has dropped negative one inch or up two inches in an area. So uh, get that tool and learn how to use it, and we'll add in the links below of how to do it. All right, closing that tool video, uh, one of the things that we are going to do for you is we're gonna add a link to every single tool item that I bought on Amazon, the exact link of the items that I did, uh, that I bought them with, and that will be below. Also, I'm gonna give you a tool inventory of the t inventory that I check on my guys with. There's gonna be some slight changes with it, but we'll still put it in it. It will send a link to our website or whatever, and you're, it's gonna be a hidden link. So only you guys that watch this video can see that link for the tool inventory. And again, you know, you can always increase your toolbox. There's always more tools that you can carry. So if you have any recommendations, please let us know. And we'll leave that in the comments below. Maybe I'll review the tool and see if it applies to our business out here in Texas. And if it does, I'll put it in our toolbox. So again, please guys, like, subscribe, leave the comments, share these videos, and catch you on the next one. See you guys, bye.